Supervisor, ladies and gentlemen of the board, and again, um, I, I'm not going to run through uh, the uh, same arguments that I made last time I was here. Uh, I will tell the board that I did go in and speak with uh, Mayor Oderkirk from Joliet in an attempt to find out if there may be an alternative to the privatization of uh, the, the water system um, in Fairmont and uh, was asking about the possibility of annexation or basically Joliet possibly taking over uh, the existing water system and, uh, and, and helping out in that way so that it wasn't a private company um, with, uh, uh, you know, basically with a profit-driven uh, agenda. So uh, I was told that the, there wasn't particularly any interest in, in annexation. However, um, they uh, basically I did talk to the acting city attorney, Marty Shanahan, and he did indicate 
Uh, they would like to maybe at least look at the numbers and find out because they have um, gone in and taken other taken over uh, other uh, systems that are not Joliet water systems in the past. So I wanted to bring that to the board's attention. And, and the main thing that I would request is that before that drastic step of privatization uh, is taken, uh, where you know, basically the, the citizens lose their ability to, uh, to vote on, on how their water is handled, how their water rates uh, are set, et cetera, um, I, I would hope that, uh, that the board would at least entertain uh, Joliet in terms of providing them the information to see if there would be any interest uh, in the city's part on, on helping out by taking over um, the, the existing water system instead of selling uh, to a private company. So I'd like to thank the board again for your time tonight and thank you for letting me go first. Take care. Thank you. Appreciate it. Supervisor Alan Rico and Township Trustees and other members on the board. My name is Belinda Heron. I'm a 46 year resident of the Fairmont community. I live at 302 Riley Avenue in Lockport, Illinois. Many in the Fairmont community have learned of your plans to sell the Fairmont water system to Aqua, Illinois. Supervisor Alan Rico, you have never failed to stay on many occasions. How about you do not want to manage our water and sewer system? And you were quoted in the newspaper saying that you feel this mess has been left on your plate. The Fairmont community spent much of the past year offering three individuals interested in sitting on the water board to have input and represent the interests of the residents of Fairmont in the decision making for our water and sewer system. These individuals wanted to have their input considered prior to the township making long term lasting decisions that would in impact the lives and finances of Fairmont residents. We are the only users of the water and sewer system and the only ones paying the bills. We've always done it this way. It's not a step forward towards change. In fact, it appears close-minded and resistant to change. Maybe it's time to do things differently. The Fairmont Community Partnership Group has worked hard to get a referendum on the ballot in November to vote to have this township supervisor negotiate reduced trash prices for all unincorporated Lockport Township. It's noteworthy, noteworthy that the Fairmont Community Partnership Group led the fight to get comparable trash prices and not to be discriminated against due to our location on the map. Yet College View, High Road, and other unincorporated rated areas where the majority of homeowners own private wells will enjoy the fruits of our labor. It's unfortunate that only Fairmont is now faced with at least double our current water bills should the sale to Aqua be completed. It sure looks like the rich will get richer and the poor will get poorer. If the referendum passes and you are successful in negotiating a better price for trash removal, Best case scenario would be rates comparable to what the cities of Lockport and Joliet are currently receiving. This, this would be a rate of approximately $22 per month. This rate would save residents, including Fairmont, roughly $100 per quarter or $400 annually on the lowest rate offered by the water department. Aqua, Illinois is estimated to at least double our rates over the next three years Instead of the average minimum water bill of $54 per month, a resident can expect monthly, monthly water bills of $108 per month. The yearly increase should remain at double, would cost each water customer more than $600 annually. While a Fairmont resident might save $400 annually on their trash bill, will turn around and pay every penny of that savings plus an additional $200 to Aqua, Illinois. When you were elected supervisor and trustees, you were tasked with improving the lives of the residents of Lockport Township, including Fairmont. This looks more like robbing Peter to pay Paul, and ultimately the Fairmont residents lose. We have all been perplexed with the problems of our aging water and sewer infrastructure system. Aquifer is soon drying up and the quest to resolve these problems. 
selling our water system to Aqua only seems to be making a bad situation worse. Fairmont School has been designated a community eligibility provision school, a designation reserved for the absolute poorest communities in the United States. More than 85% of our students qualify for free or reduced meals. I'm certain an additional $600 or more per year will have a huge negative impact on the bottom line for these families. I certainly hope this supervisor and trustees consider these things prior to making a decision that will have such a lasting impact on the residents you are charged with helping. There are hundreds of heads of households who are working, prefer not to speak publicly, or simply hope someone else can tell their story, who will never step foot in this room, but will suffer from a decision made by this board. Choosing to sell the water system will have a rippling effect on the Fairmont community for generations to come. The next set of elected, elected officials can't undo this decision. Consider the number of residents who have phoned this office for an explanation of the $7.50 surcharge being added to their current bills. Can you imagine the fallout from a water bill that's at least double the current bill? The City of Juliet has invited Fairmont to join the Alternative Water Source Study Committee. They have hired a consulting firm to look for alternative water sources for not just Juliet, but the college communities, including unincorporated Lockport Township. We want you to consider at least postponing the sale until we see if we can get water from the City of Juliet, further consider managing the system ourselves, and explore all the alternatives that may be available to us. If you are dead set on going forward with the sale, we implore you to exercise your right to place rate limits on the purchaser as allowed in Public Act 100-0751, page 8, section F. On a personal note, I started working at the age of 15 and remained gainfully employed for more than 45 years before becoming disabled. A double water bill for me represents a tank of gas, groceries, insurance payments, trash services, a doctor's bill, a prescription, and many other necessities. The vast majority of Fairmont residents are hardworking members of our society. Fairmont also has an aging population of senior citizens living on fixed incomes. There is also a school with a CEP, Community Eligibility for Business. This designation is assigned to the poor schools. Are you prepared to leave a legacy of being the five elected officials who drove a stake through the hearts and wallets of an entire community? The Fairmont community is finally on an upward trajectory after decades of being overlooked and underserved. Our neighborhood is cleaner and experiencing less dumping Fairmont School, with the support of Lewis University and the new administration, is offering more remedial after-school programs than they have in years. Lewis University has their future teachers earning the, earning the on-the-job training experience to the benefit of Fairmont students. They are also providing a homework club. A TED alumni is offering a STEM program at our community center. Shiloh Church has an after-school basketball camp with an emphasis on homework completion. A free little library was installed in the community garden last week. More than 2,000 free books have been donated. We will grow. Will County built a beautiful community garden this last spring. We provided fresh vegetables to the food pantry all summer. The Fairmont Community Center has a new gymnasium, new floors, and fresh paint on walls. Ridley High Avenue has been resurfaced. This is the first newly paved street in Fairmont in decades. The city of Lockport repaid this portion of East Oak Avenue. Three long abandoned houses have, and one form of business, Oasis Tavern, have been demolished. Foreclosed habitat homes are being refurbished, refurbished for a handful of residents living in uninhabitable homes. A home improvement program was instituted for residents who income qualified. These are all positive achievements for a community that's been forgotten for decades. We brought this board an idea to save all unincorporated Lockport Township on our trash services. If we successfully pass our referendum in November, why would you choose now to make a decision that will have a rippling negative impact on our community for decades? Some of the local organizations who have contributed to our upward trajectory include 
We will grow Will County, Lockport Township Highway Department, Will County Land Use, Sheriff Fest, Will County, Habitat for Humanity, Lewis University, United Way Women of Will County, Helpers of Mother Earth, after the Peanut STEM program, NAACP Joliet thir Chapter 3018, and some others. The Fairmont Community Partnership Group has been holding monthly meetings going into our fourth year. You have to join us at even one meeting to discuss your plans for our future. I can't tell you how many questions I've tried to answer about the $7.50 surcharge. Of course, I do my best to inform the community of what's going on, but I'm just one person. You haven't included one letter of explanation for the many residents who don't have a clue what's going on with their bill. Just last week, a Fairmont senior citizen with excellent insurance showed up to pick up a prescription of 14 pills after being discharged from St. Joe's Hospital. Unfortunately, the pharmacy said their insurance wouldn't cover their prescription because it was more than $1,000. This is a reality for many people, including Fairmont residents. Last but certainly not least, we'd like to know who owns the water system since the township never repaid the bonds issued for its purchase. In fact, HUD forgave the debt after years of non-payment. Is it really yours to sell? Should you proceed with a sale, we would like to know the future of the following monies. The $7.50 surcharge that's been added for three months, or approximately $19,800, that's based on 880 households. The $300,000 plus dollars in revenue, the $5,000 that you've taken from months in place in the infrastructure fund. We would like to have an answer in writing within 30 to 60 days if you can't provide one by our next meeting. Thank you. And I do have an address and those questions so you all can have them. And the address will be presented. Thank you. Okay, thank you for your uh, statement. So I appreciate your, your time and your consideration tonight. I want to offer a couple thoughts for your consideration, and then I'm going to have an appeal at the end for your consideration as well. And I'm following in the steps of John Connor and Belinda Herod as well in terms of what our purpose is. Um, so tonight at our school, is parent-teacher conferences. Otherwise, you may have had more people uh, here tonight. So I'm trying to be a messenger from our school parents uh, to you in terms of what we'd like you to consider. Uh, first of all, we're in a growing situation at Fairmont School right now. We have approximately 80, 80 more students this year than we did at the end of last year. Uh, we think there's a couple good things going on that have uh, made that possible. But my point is that we are growing and we have families who want very much uh, I can speak for myself. My parents wanted me to be better off than they were. Uh, same thing with me and, and our son. We want him to be better uh, off than we were. Uh, the parents of our school feel the same way about their students, their children. They want them to be better. They work very hard to make that possible. Now, all of us are concerned about expenses and taxes and what it costs. 
And I'd like to thank you at this point for your uh, publicity in regard to uh, the upcoming vote in terms of the waste uh, management and hopefully that referendum will go through. Uh, I guess we'll know in a couple weeks uh, whether we're successful. But the newspaper and, and your uh, letter, uh, we very much appreciate. Uh, that could be a savings uh, to our families uh, that they all are looking forward to. At the same time now, our, our concern is on the water reclamation side, uh, if we negate uh, what we're going to gain in terms of possibly $400 a year to a family, uh, if we're going to negate that and make it even more punitive for our families to pay their water bills, uh, then we're not coming out ahead. So very simply, our appeal to you is uh, we encourage you to take your time. We, we don't know whether the referendum is even going to pass in two weeks from now. At least we need to see what happens there. We encourage you to certainly uh, not only uh, look at, but to thoroughly study what the options are before making this very critical decision. So that's our appeal uh, from our school, again, with our, our families who are very concerned about this. Uh, we are a school where our children walk to school. Uh, many of us grew up that way, going to neighborhood schools. Well, Fairmont is still like that. The vast majority of, of our students, our children, come to school from the neighborhood. So we're asking for you to, if, if you don't mind me saying, slow this process, make sure you're as thorough as can be on what the options are and uh, to just help keep our costs down instead of escalating them, which can happen through privatization. So thank you very much for your time. signed the bad water bill. Now what? Earlier this summer, Governor Bruce Rauner signed House Bill 4508, which means any publicly owned water system in Illinois could now be targeted by giant, profit-driven private water utilities. The bill doubles down on previous legislation that allows Opera Illinois and, Amer and Illinois American Water to impose automatic rate hikes to finance the company's purchase of municipal water systems. But the 2018 version removes the 7,500 connection cap on the size of water systems the companies can buy. Cub fought vigorously to defeat or at least improve this bill, arguing that the customers of Illinois American Water and Aqua Illinois should not be forced to finance 100% the company's purchase of a community's water system. We also fought to require a local referendum before communities could sell their water system to a private operator. Aqua and Illinois American charged 20 to 70% more than public systems in the Chicago region, the Chicago Tribune found last year and the parent companies of Aqua and Illinois American can rake in a combined, have a combined profit of $385 million in the first half of 2018. Since both companies plan to grow through acquisition, the roughly 80% of municipal systems that remain public could all be targeted as potential profit centers. Here is what you need to know if your municipality is approached by 
to private companies. The power to privatize your water system lies with your local elected officials. That means you will need to go to city council meetings and make your voice heard. One strategy could be to ask your local elected officials to put a non-binding referendum on the ballot. Your elected officials would be required to abide by the results of a non-binding referendum, but such a vote could allow the entire community to weigh in. Another strategy, strategy could be to work with local elected officials to pass an ordinance preventing the sale of your public water utility. In August, Baltimore became the first large U.S. city to pass an ordinance banning the sale of its municipal water system. The private water company will offer your municipality a very good price since their customers will fit the, foot the entire bill. Aqua and Illinois American created the new law to ensure municipalities' water systems will be appraised for the highest dollar amount possible, enticing cash-strapped municipalities to sell. Why would the private water companies want to shell out all that money? Because the law guarantees that existing ratepayers will cover 100% of the purchase price. The private companies buying up municipal water systems aren't paying the bill, their customers are. There are rate caps for existing customers of 5% of their bill if the company makes multiple acquisitions. That cap resets at every utility rate case, which is usually about every two years. However, there are no cap rate, or rate caps on newly acquired customers. Ask your local elected officials to consider alternatives to privatization. For example, has the community explored a low interest loan from the state to help investment in your public system? The Illinois Environmental Protection Agency offers extremely low interest loans to municipal water and waste systems. At the time of this writing, the interest rate was about 1.8%. Understand that publicly owned water systems will still have rate increases. If your system is in bad shape due to disinvestment, your rates are going to go up no matter who owns your water system. But the private water is more expensive since consumers of private water utilities also pay for a profit margin of nearly 10%. Taxes on those profits and acquisition costs for any public system that private utility buy, may buy. Push your representatives in Congress for water infrastructure funding. Private water companies are already talking to your representatives lobbying against each funding. It's much easier to make a case for privatization when municipal systems are underfunded and need expensive infrastructure improvements. Make sure your members of Congress know that water infrastructure investment is important to you. We've been seeing a large range of privatization of the public sector. This is not a good thing. This is a very bad thing. There's a reason there's a private and a public sector. And having the private sector taking over more and more of the public sector is not going to benefit the people of this country. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Hi, my name is Rachel Mitchell. I live at 617 North Green in Joliet, and I agree with the previous speakers. Um, I think that delaying it a few months to six months at least would be wise. Joliet has said that by the summer of 2019 that they will have planned um, their uh, decision on what they're doing with their water. So I think it is at least prudent for this board to wait until that decision has been made. Uh, the recent reports that have been given to the county board has talked about the drying up of the aquifers and how the entire system needs to be revamped. Joliet coming off of that aquifer can really change things, but even they are saying that from a regional standpoint, large regions may need to get off besides just Joliet. So there is opportunity there. Um, if you sell it, though, as the other speakers have rightly put out, we lose the seat at the table. 
So if they want to set the prices at whatever, then it's no longer up to the residents who are paying that bill to have a, a voice. Um, I also want to point out that CMAP 2050 was just revealed up in Chicago. The CMAP covers the seven collar counties. Uh, one of the points of interest on there was the water in the aquifer. Uh, in that study, they talked about investing in the water infrastructure from a public standpoint, that uh, governments need to start putting money into their public uh, waterways. So this is something else that we consider looking at. Um, by being in the CMAP 2050, that means there are federal dollars of allowed in the budget. So by going after federal funds, that may be another way to fix the system. And it's my understanding that the federal government was the one who put this water system in to begin with. That may be an avenue that is worth exploring. Um, the other thing I want to point out is the prison, the Joliet prison on, the, on State Street um, has recently uh, been revamped to allow tourism. That may bring in additional companies in this area that will be looking to get onto a water system. This is something you might be able to uh, explore with a private-public partnership. So there are many options in, in, in ahead of you in the months to come that you could explore. By selling the water right now, you are selling other residents who are sitting here telling you to please stop the, the process and slow it down and explore all these other options. I implore you to be um, transparent uh, and to give the timeline and decisions uh, in a in manner in which all of the residents can come back and give their feedback before making a decision. Thank you very much. My name is Katie Allwood. I'm a resident of Lot 465 plus years. I've been a homeowner for 54 of those years, and I am just really frustrated with this whole deal of this water system. The problem has just not started. The problem has been started right shortly after they brought the water through. We started out paying a $25 fee, whether you use the water or not. They upped that fee to $30. Uh, uh, I could be wrong in, in the um, in the figures. We don't know where that money goes. Nobody never bothers to come to the community and say to us, uh, you know, this is going on or that's going on. We need to do this or we need to do that. Nobody never comes to the community until election time. And then you got you want us to vote for you, but what are you doing for us? What have you done for us? I, I just have a problem with this board of carry. And while I'm speaking, I'm, I'm going to be brief, because Delinda and Mrs. Spoonauer and Collins and whoever else is focused have said enough. But I want you all to know that selling, and, I, and I, one thing I can't understand, why are you in such a hurry to sell? The water system now. The problem then is some of you came on board after the problem, and well, you, some of you been on board the whole time the problem was there. Others came on board after. So all of a sudden now you want to sell the water system. Well, why? And what is it, and how is it going to benefit the Fairmont uh, community? It's not going to benefit me if, if, if any, because it's going to hurt me more. I'm 80 years old. And if I have to pay double a water uh, fee, that means something else in my house is going to have to go unnoticed or undone. I hope you all feel real comfortable in your little comfort zone. And don't, just don't say, we doing this for the Fairmont community, because you are not doing anything for the Fairmont community. And I'm a perfect example. This is just a water board. But what I'm, what I'm saying affects Fairmont community, period. I graduated from Fairmont School. I walked the street to go to Fairmont School. There were no sidewalks. That's been 65, 67 years ago. We still got a partial, a piece of the sidewalk. We still haven't got what we need. This water board has not done justice for the citizens of Fairmont. And I don't mind speaking my people. I don't care whether you like me or dislike me. That that's not going to get it. The one thing you all going to have to worry about is the voters that come out and vote you in or out of office. Good job. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name is Dan Janetta Harris. I'm a resident of Fairmont's community. Um, my 
as well say a lifelong residence because I moved here when I was 10. Um, I'm a parent of children in the area. I'm a single mother. I am a homeowner. This has been a very disheartening time. We here, we come up here, we've been, and, and I, I apologize because I was so frustrated, Delinda, these last couple months that I did not want to attend. I'm sorry, I apologize. But I've been so irritated with this whole matter that sometimes you have to remove yourself from situations in order to see things clearly. And my perception of this now is this had to be, this is, is nothing to benefit Fairmont community at all. Because the, why would we even go through that hard work of kept trying to get through a referendum and then just two weeks prior to the referendum, maybe even passing, we go through this? That's called a scare tactic from where I'm from. And it's, it's really starting, it's disheartening. You were voted in to help benefit everybody in the, in the Lockport Township community. Instead of being treated fairly, we're constantly being ignored. We're constantly being neglected. There is absolutely nothing that is being done to justify any of this. I'm not understanding. The little work that we do get is because someone else in our community goes out and fights and asks for it. Why are we continually having to do our own leg work when there is no one else who sits who are elected officials who are supposed to be, who are being paid to simply do justice for that community, for this community, for this township, and we're still not getting anything. This is injustice being done to a community. This is this once was a thriving community. Yes, I too graduated from the Fairmont area, Fairmont Elementary. I didn't go to the elementary. I went to the junior high when it was different. It was two schools. I graduated in the class of 1985. I was an aspiring child because I had a community, a school that was behind us. We don't have that anymore. Township is not, how are we benefiting in that area? Instead of benefiting, instead of giving us the resources that we need to continue to grow, you're severing everything, every branch that tries to come out. Why is that? When we come up here, we ask questions. We never get response to the questions that we're, at, we, we're asking. There has never been a reply to the millions of questions I'm sure that we've come up to in regards to this water bill, in regards to the garbage bill. What is it? What do we need to do? Yes, if this goes and you go and sell this, yes, that means I'm going to have to come out of my pocket with even more money. Every time we come up here for something and we think we're getting somewhere, it costs us more money, the community of Fairmont, more money. How can we continue to go out and give more money for something we're still not benefiting from anything? Yes, you were elected to do these things. If that is not what you wanted to do, you should not have ran for anything. And yes, you can be voted out. But we just want justice to be done with us. That is all we've ever asked. We've never asked for anything other than to be treated fairly, to be treated right. It's just, how could you live with yourselves? That's so inhumane, that's inhumane, in my perspective. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Any other citizens wishing to address the board here tonight? All right, thank you for your comments. Moving on, we'll go on to the utility management report. Mm -hmm. well, I just want to give uh, the board an update on well two at Bruce Road. It's been rehab put back together, and we're just uh, washing the lines out and running samples every day. Once we get those passed, then we'll put back on the line. And then we'll move over. Depending on what happens tonight with this project, move on over to Princeton. All right. Yeah. No, that's all. All right. Thank you. Moving on to 13 construction. Chris, do you have anything tonight? 
question I would have is who's going to be supervising if we award it, obviously, to the lowest bid is the Austin Tyler. Who will be supervising this entire project? Uh, Robinson Engineering would have construction engineer on site, part-time construction observation to see when the main's going in for uh, pressure testing and chlorinating in the main and everything related okay. to that. And then your, in, your supervisor will be in contact with Larry and Chris so we all know what's going on. Right, and okay. I've um, talked to Larry about that today. You have uh, your other well just being rehabbed and trying to get back online. So we're going to try and coordinate the shutdown of this line during uh, while the Princeton well gets pulled and they do the same acidization and air bursting in that to, to boost the uh, uh, water level in the well. So that you won't, it'll be simultaneous and uh, that it won't deter from, you know, you being out of water from that well two times in a row. Okay. So then my understanding is that tonight we are to pick either one or two and then either three or four. No, just one of those. One or two, three or four. So one so Just in. One yeah. Them. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So yeah, the, the low bid on the first option would be for, for the PVC, the 36, 146 for just the water main and trench or 56, 9, 57, 50 for PVC and full driveway. I got a question for you. What is in that driveway? Is in that maintained by the highway department? The roadway. It's, it's from Princeton to the driveway. Of the right. Of the well, so why would that be included here? I just want to see what it would cost. Okay. You know, I guess I talked to Greg earlier. Um, it's really up to the board. It was my dollar. I would probably not do the blacktop. Yeah, I mean, why, why would they pay for it? And maybe yeah. work with the highway commissioner in the future if he's going to do something, where maybe the water board could, you know, pay a portion. Did we do that at all? The only other thing is, going back to the self tiler the, the, the class PVC, you guys asked me within the last year, year and a half, to get different bids for this informally. And the, the people I talked to, they all recommended the PVC. They did? Yeah, so okay. it's two or three. And I would recommend going with the PVC, too. It's in the third by hundred dollars. So if we all agree to go with the PVC, then the decision would be between uh, alternate bid number two or alternate bid number four, right? That's correct. I mean, that's our decision whether we want to put the new road in or um, wait and just, you know, because it's my understanding that really the well or um, utility and management in the 13 construction back are the only people that really use the road. Right, but only just so you know that you can see, if you look at the picture, the, the church is there. They use it. They also have another exit off of Inglewood. Mm -hmm. And then there's one other resident at the very end yeah. that uses it. Now, I understand from last year, um, the park district found out that they actually own that way <coughs> from the well down to that other residence. So they had to make that park. The only park that would be the township and ours is right at the mall. Right at the <coughs> that into the, the first step. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as far as the asphalt, that probably wouldn't happen until 2019 anyway. Yeah, that's what Greg told me today. Right. Yeah. We still can always like, work with John. Uh, that's that's what I would recommend mm -hmm. at this time. Instead of spending twenty thousand dollars. Right. And just so uh, uh, I forgot to tell you, when they did air burst well two, the roof road well, it actually raised the water level substantially. I don't have a report back, but like 40, 50 feet. Where when before it was done, it was like the airline, when I pumped the air down in there, it's like 110 feet over the pump. It's 140. You know, it goes down to about 110. Where before we did this work, it was going down from 100. 
usually take two to four weeks for the contractor to get his insurance and bonds together. So we could start probably the middle to end of November and they can usually put in a hundred feet a day so they would probably be done within a week to ten days. The restoration, you know, would be part and we had it in there if they just did the um, transfer, if they did the whole thing for a temporary aggregate to be on on the site over the winter and then come back and finish that up in the spring. So is that so what are we we're gonna push out to work on the transfer then until they get that done or that's what I would like to do. Just so we don't have to turn it because I'm gonna have to turn it all off for that water main replacement. So we can coordinate with the well company and this company to do it. They won't be in each other's way. Once the well company sets up their frame, they really there's no traffic involved. Well they're still gonna get their guys back. Yeah, they they can go around the bar or start or something. That would be the best thing to Yeah. Okay. And this is something Greg can do. Even if it, let's say it didn't get done for six weeks, they can work during the winter doing this, correct? Yeah. And they might prefer a winter job. Any other questions? I would uh, entertain um, what you were discussing more. I'll make a, a motion to accept the bid, ultimate bid number two. 10 inch PVC water main <coughs> trench and restoration. And for clarification, that is without the asphalt. Without the asphalt. Okay. Now, second the motion. I got a motion. I'll uh, make a motion. The second by uh, our Billing. Any other questions? Let me go. I have a roll call, please. Dean Morelli? Yes. Ron Alberico? Yes. Barb Delaney? Yes. Should it be the systems improvement account or infrastructure? Systems improvement, uh, 7148. Agenda tonight. We neglected to put that. There's a five thousand dollar transfer that we usually do. Uh, Chris neglected to put that on. There. We had a little discussion because of this. All the money being spent on this improvements and stuff. We didn't think it would be a good idea to move it this month. I still felt it should be on the agenda so we can vote it on it. But she uh, thought we weren't going to move it, so she didn't put it on there. So if you do want to uh, continue moving money over there, I can put it on the agenda for next month and put ten thousand. Thank <laughs> you.
shouldn't be, but uh, we will go into a regular session as soon as we're done talking in there. So you're welcome to stay. <laughs> Thank you. 